Hi, Robin here. This is one in a series of videos of an introduction to structural equation modelling using the onyx. We're going to carry out uh, analysis today using some data which you can get from my website. That's the website. You can see the details here. The data, that's which we need, grmt underscore fem dot dat. That's details of how to download all the free software. Here are some details of what we'll be doing. We're carrying out what's known as a confirmatory factor analysis today using Onyx, as I said. And the data set we're using is an incredibly famous data set produced in 1939. Concerns 26 psychological tests on 73 girls. We're using a subset, um, the 7th and 8th grade girls. They hypothesized or we will hypothesize rather, they hypothesize something slightly different. We will hypothesize there's two underlying factors from a previous exploratory factor analysis. And we'll assume that these underlying factors are visual perception and reading ability. So we've got several tests that look at either visual perception or reading ability. As I said, the data is in the gmrt underscore fem dot dat file. And we've assumed we were doing this analysis freshly in 1939 that we carried out an exploratory factor analysis first before we decided there were only two underlying factors. Um, well we might have had a very strong theory based upon previous research or oh, nowadays we might have just been reading the rooms. So the aims of factor analysis, there's basically two main aims of factor analysis. One is to count for measurement error and the second thing is to reduce the size of the data. So we may have 10 or 11 items and we might reduce them to perhaps two or three factor scores. The problem is factor analysis and SEM techniques have developed along really separate paths and that means the same concept can have different terms in the two approaches. So in SEM a regression path is called factor loading in factor analysis. In SEM a latent variable is called a factor in factor analysis and often in SEM where you just talk about observed variables you mean in factor analysis an item or indicator. In classic score measurement we think of a score as consisting of two separate elements. We think of it consisting of error Error can be for various reasons. Read Boland's book, Structural Equation Modelling, if you want to get a, a very good introduction to the idea and co problems of measurement error. And then this underlying factor, which is the second component to our item score. As I say, regression paths in factor analysis are called factor loadings. And they uh, are equate to B values and beta values that we've talked about in regression before and they measure the degree of influence the factor has on the item. Notice I say the degree of influence the factor has on the item. We're talking about a directional relationship here. If there's only one factor loading on the specific indicator, specific item that is, then the factor loading squared equals R squared, as it does in ordinary regression, and it's also called the commonality. And that commonality is often shown in output as H2. Now the trouble is that we can have more than one factor relating to a particular item. So you might have several going to a particular item. We won't have it in this example, you can have. And if that's the case, then the commonality value is actually equal to the sum of all the squared factor loadings on the particular item. And that actually can cause problems because you get what's known as a Hayward case where you might get a correlation which is even more than one. And then different programs um, work around it different ways. So let's begin with our analysis. We need to use Onyx, so as I say we downloaded Onyx before and there's the latest version. We double click on that and it brings up the Onyx window. Get rid of tip of the day. We also need our data file which I mentioned before you can get from my website. Um, I've got it locally which I'll do now. There's the data file grmt underscore fem dot dat. Just drag that to your Onyx window. Close our window. 
down the bottom of the data window we can move it around which we will do and then we create a new model right mouse click create empty model we like to span the wind slightly because we're going to have a few variables there and now we add our variables we've got six indicators three concerned with visual recognition and three concerned with reading ability paragraph sentences and word meaning shift left mouse click drabs them all drag them along to the actual window and now we put them in the same order that I've got them in the handout Now we create our two latent variables. So I should call them factor, shouldn't I? And factor analysis. First one. And we'll click on this and call this visual. Enlarge it slightly. Create another one. Right mouse click. Another latent variable, another factor, call this reading. Now, we're going to have problems with these two factors because if you remember, they're undefined in terms of a scale. We can either set the path value which we're going to have to one, or we can set the variance value to one, and we'll set the variance value to one. Fix parameter, and it's set at one. The same. Check it's set to one. Yes, it is. Right, fine. Now we're going to link these latent variables to each of the indicators. So we click on the right mouse click, right mouse click, right mouse click to each of the indicators for visual ability. Right mouse click right mouse click right mouse click to reach our indicators of reasonability we want to make each of these estimated value rather than a fixed value so we click on one and hold down shift key then click each one in turn that's left mouse click I think it used to work by right mouse click but now it seems to work by left mouse click left mouse click there we are and right mouse click to bring up the window and we say free parameter and while we've got them all selected if we click again right mouse click we can say customize path and choose show standardized estimates now we have our basic factor analysis model here notice we've got new results click on there so estimation choose best maximum likelihood estimate and it may have updated it just to keep this in sync with the handout I've given you I'm going to rename all these error variables as errors so I'm going to go to each one and just give it E1 to E6 which I'll do now and then we'll come back I have now changed all these error variances as you'll see to be E1 E2 to E6. Also, we would hypothesize that these two underlying latent variables or factors are related in some way, and we can check that. So, what we could do is look at a model that where they're independent and look at a model where they are correlated and compare the two as we've done in previously. Um, let's have a just look at the results right mouse click show estimation summary and we see here we have an AIC of 2627 we have once a big measure here of 2654 
and we have various other measures. Two other measures that are quite popular are the RMSCA, which is 0 0.13, and the SRMR, which is 0 0.19. Both of these, the smaller value, better fit, and similarly with the AIC and the BIC, small values better fit. So what we'll do now is clone this model and produce the other model and then compare the two with a maximum likelihood test. Right mouse click on the model and select Edit Clone Model. Now we have a second model here and this time we want to add a correlation, a covariance path between the two factors. So click on one, hold down shift key and then right mouse click and drag to the other. I'm using a tracker ball so I was a bit confused there. And then we want to make it a, a free parameter estimate rather than set it to one or zero. And I'll have a value, it'll also be nice to see the standardized value there. Basically the correlation between the two which is 0.49 so highly correlated those two factors and now we click on one model it doesn't matter which, which way round you do it click on one and then right mouse click and drag to the other and we have the line now if we hold the cursor or whatever my trackball over it we can see we have a p-value of 4.84 to the minus 4 so that's 0.00048 Zero, 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 0.00048 so one model is much better than the other again we can check which one it is by looking at the summary so estimation summary for that one and we can click on here again and say show estimation summary for this one and we get two windows and long term which is which put them on top of the models So we now see that we had estimated 12 parameters here, we had 13 here when we added a covariance. If we look at the values that are reduced for improved fit, we see we've gone from AIC 2627 to 2616. BIC has gone down as well, 2654 to 2646. The RMSCA, the RMSCA was 0 0.13, and now it's 0, which is excellent. We will close these windows now, and I'll talk a little more about models. Obviously, we could have set these various values to equal one another, um, compared the models um, in other ways as well using this technique and it's quite useful that you can see the values change as you mess on with the models and that is basically how you carry out a simple contrary factor analysis in onyx